Hi! I bet you guys all really miss me. Um, I am coming to you from my basement, which I've been cleaning over the past couple weeks. I found this really cool microphone. Hello! Hello! has an echo. Just thought it might be fun to use here and there. Like when we talk about Shakespeare sonnets, like we're doing today. I also found this really old phone, in case you didn't ever see a phone like this before. This is what we used to talk on back in the 80s when I went to high school. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about Shakespearean sonnets today. And um, there's going to be a practice one for you to see in case you're having trouble with labeling sonnets or understanding what iambic pentameter is. So, here we go. The original form of the sonnet was the Italian sonnet, which was developed in the 14th century by an author named Petrarch. He wrote all these poems to uh, this woman named Laura, which I think is kind of cool because my name is Laura. Uh, the original rhythm and rhyme scheme of the English sonnet were um, modified because the English language did not have as many rhyming possibilities as the Italian language. So the Italian rhyme scheme is ABBA, ABBA, or like, I like to say ABBA, ABBA. Um, and the first eight lines are called an octave. And then the end part is CDE or CDCD, CD, just some forms of C's and D's or C's, D's and E's in the last six lines, and that's called the sestet. So Italian was the original one, and um, that's just a little historical background, but really what you need to be concerned about is the English sonnet. So the rhyme scheme for an English sonnet, which is also called a Shakespearean sonnet because Shakespeare made it really popular, is ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG. And if you're not sure what rhyme scheme is, um, we'll be explaining all that. So um, let's go ahead and look at the rhyme scheme for Shakespeare or for Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. Um, when you figure out the rhyme scheme of a poem, you look at the last word in the line. So in line one of Sonnet 18, the last word is day. So we're going to give that the letter A because it's the first rhyming word that we're dealing with. Any other words at the end of a line that rhyme with day will also be given the letter A, like the word may in line three. Then you go to the next line, line two. The word is temperate. Since this word does not rhyme with day, we have to assign it the next letter in the alphabet, which is B. Any other words at the end of a line that rhyme with temperate will be labeled with a B. The word date is supposed to rhyme with temperate and should be labeled with a B. Today, we don't think temperate and date rhyme, but there are a couple of possible reasons why they are both labeled B. One is that they may have rhymed in Shakespeare's time. Maybe they pronounced the word temperate so that it did rhyme with date. Or maybe Shakespeare is considering these two words to contain what we call near rhyme. Near rhyme is also called approximate rhyme, slant rhyme, off rhyme, imperfect rhyme, or half rhyme. A rhyme in which the sounds are similar but not exact, as in home and come, or close and loose. Close and lose, not loose, sorry. Continuing with, sorry. Continuing with the rhyme scheme labeling, shines and declines will receive the letter C because they rhyme. Dimmed and untrimmed would receive the letter D. Fade and shade E. Oest and growest F. And finally, C and the would be labeled G and G. So then the overall rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet is ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG. Okay, now some other facts about sonnets. Some other facts about sonnets. My daughter's rolling her eyes at me. She's filming me right now. All sonnets have 14 lines, but the way those lines are grouped is distinct in a Shakespearean sonnet. If you look at the rhyme scheme pattern, you will notice that after every four lines, the pattern changes. This is because the lines are grouped into three sections of four lines, which are called quatrains. So four lines is a quatrain, like a quad has four wheels, quatrain has four lines. Okay, so it goes quatrain, 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 
And then you have two lines left at the end and two people together is a couple. So those two lines are called couplets. And in this case, those rhyme, so they're called a rhyming couplet. The final distinction of a Shakespearean sonnet is that it's written in iambic pentameter. What's iambic pentameter? Well, an iam contains an unstressed and stressed beat. Pent means five and meter is a unit. So iambic pentameter is five meters, meters or units, which each contain an unstressed beat followed by a stress beat. Some people think it sounds like a heartbeat or a horse hooves. So it would be like this. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So soft, hard, soft, hard, soft, hard sounds. Because each line in the sonnet contains five meters with two beats in each meter, the total syllables per line is 10. Okay, so each line in a sonnet has 10 syllables and it goes unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you count the syllables in the rest of the lines, you'll find that each line contains 10 syllables. When reading Romeo and Juliet, you will notice that the lines of the play are written in iambic pentameter, so it's that unstressed stress beat for every line, even though they don't all rhyme, okay? So unrhymed lines of iambic pentameter is called blank verse. A couple places you'll see actual sonnets are at the start of Acts 1 and 2 with the prologue, and that's the first um, thing that we'll look at when we read Romeo and Juliet, and we'll talk about how it's a sonnet, and we'll look at the rhyme scheme. So you'll notice that each of these prologues has 14 lines, has a rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, and is written in iambic pentameter. All the criteria that you need to make a Shakespearean or an English sonnet. Thanks for listening. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Remy? Yes, I'll send him to the office right away. Goodbye.